from Las Las Vegas, and welcome to Chris Garcia, the Conservative American. I'm here today with my good friend, Lou Baker, who is going to have a show soon on Radio Tribune, and he's going to talk to you today about Cobra and other things. Lou, how are you feeling today? Yeah, thanks, Chris, <clears throat> and uh, welcome to the show, folks. My name is Lou, but the show is going to be called Cobra, and there's several reasons for calling it Cobra. First of all, uh, you may not be aware that the federal government has a program called COBRA. And what that does, it allows for insurance coverage for individuals who either lose their job voluntarily or involuntarily. And we're not going to go into it in too much depth today, only to alert you to the fact that there is an alternative to Obamacare. Thank God that we have that opportunity to at least carry on where our people are being cared for. That's the most important thing, is to make sure that we have continued coverage without going through two years of study and research to find a program that will be acceptable. This is something that we can do now because it's part of the federal program. So as a result, there's some information that will be passed out, and we'll talk about uh, the cost and some perhaps some subsidies in particular cases, but it's like border control. We have to bring it under control. We're talking about the physical well-being of the citizens of the United States. Now, Chris, you can probably tell more about some of the difficulties with Obamacare uh, than I can. Yes, <laughs> it's a disaster. Uh, for one, health care should never be a mandate. Um, that's not, that should never be, the president should never use his power to mandate that everybody has to have insurance. That's a person's choice, and they should be able to choose what kind of coverage that they want. That's number one. Number two, uh, it destroys small businesses because it forces you to have a certain kind of coverage uh, once you make a, a certain amount of money. And what it does is it has no incentives for small businesses to hire. Uh, these are all personal decisions that people and businesses should be able to make. The federal government should never intervene and, and have a mandate what kind of insurance your business or people that work at your business should have. That's a disaster for one. And the premiums, you know, eventually it's going to fall back on the taxpayers. The premiums are going up 100, 115, 120 percent in certain states because not enough people are signing up. And we always knew that that was going to happen. So now the, the insurance, the money is falling back on the, on the people, the taxpayers, to have to fund Obamacare. So it's a socialist program. The president should never mandate personal insurance for people to have to have. It's ridiculous. That sounds like we live in Cuba or Russia or something like that. It's crazy. It should never happen. Well, with COBRA, it's voluntarily. You, you don't have, absolutely. It's it's not a mandatory yeah. program. You get the chicken, uh, chicken food. <laughs> <laughs> you get to uh, uh, choose uh, the program that fits you best. And again, this is something that is a is already a federal program yes. that we just need to investigate a little bit more yeah. to make sure that everybody that needs the coverage gets it. Yeah. And you know the problem here in America today is that we have so much fraud mm -hmm. and hopefully we can avoid unnecessary costs by eliminating the fraud. Now, the fact that COBRA uh, is available means that maybe we don't have to worry about health care too much anymore, or at least until we find a replacement that's going to do the, the things that Healthcare is supposed to provide. And yes, we definitely need it. And yes, we are the leaders of the world. But guess what? We have to get smarter. Thankfully, we have a president who's open to these options yes. and who has said that he is our voice. He said, I am your voice. Now, we need to make sure that he gets to hear us, that he listens to what we have to say. And that's really where it's going to begin, is by getting this message out to him. And by doing the groundwork, it's not our job, because we're not presidential, we're not congressional <coughs> delegates or uh, affiliated with a particular political party. <coughs> we are Americans, all of us. Absolutely. And we have to support our president. We must, because otherwise we're going to have chaos and confusion.
All these distractions prevent him from doing his job. Stop it. Chris, elaborate. Absolutely. And, and what I try to tell people, and, and this has been going on, honestly, Republican and Democrat for the last 30 or 40 years, I'm not a conspiracy person. I don't believe in conspiracies. But what I do believe in, definitely, there was a new world order. And I believe that came after the last war. It, it was formed in the 50s and 60s. It was an agreement amongst many banks and many world leaders. And what they were going to do, basically, is, is they were going to optimize the amount of money that banks, the World Bank, uh, a lot of the, the, the most uh, wealthy families all around the world were going to come together. And they were basically going to control the world market, not just financial, but as far as uh, minerals, gold, silver, other things. They were going to control the world prices. And basically what they wanted to do was form a new world order in which they use cheap labor all around the world. The United States was going to be the leader in that. And they didn't understand why we wanted to have open borders. That was, that was, those were rules and laws that were signed into existence under NAFTA. It was going to be under the TPP. The new world, world order wants open borders. That's exactly what they want. They want the flow of migration, cheap labor all around the world. The United States wanted that. They wanted their borders open so that we could get cheap labor from the Middle East, cheap labor from Asia, and of course, cheap labor from Mexico. That's what we wanted, the flow of goods and services and people. We wanted the borders open. Those are future voters, which the Liberal Party was going to use, the Democratic Party. They were going to issue themselves security cards. They were going to sign them up to vote. Of course, we have illegals voting at record numbers. That was proven in the last election, and that's what they want. They're coming from third world countries. Basically, Mexico is a third world country. Those people are starving down there if you've ever been down there. If you come to the United States and you get a job with a Social Security card, you feel like your life has improved, your life has gotten better. But what they don't understand is what that's doing to the quality of the American life. Americans are used to making a living wage. When you have somebody that will come over the border and work for seven, six, seven, eight dollars an hour, you are lowering the living wage for most Americans who are not going to work for that wage. They're not going to work for six, seven, eight dollars an hour. They want a living wage. And so when you allow the freedom of your borders to be open and the flow of illegal immigrants to come into your country and lower the living wage for your own citizens, you get a Donald Trump in office. You get a revolt by the American people who see the flow of immigration coming to this country illegally, see their life wage being lowered, and they have to work for lower wages Why the prices of food and fuel and everything else is going up. And that's why you got to revolt in this last election. And hopefully Donald Trump does something against immigration, illegal immigration, and that he does build that wall because that's why he was elected and put in office. So I hope he follows through on that. Well, Chris, <clears throat> you put forth a couple of great ideas and, and principles. And now I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on, on some of that. First of all, when we talk about the New World Order, okay, first of all, that sends a message to the populace that, ah, oh, what the New World Order? Okay, well, the real thrust of what we're trying to do here in the world is not a New World Order, but a new law and order That's right. world. Now, there's a huge difference between the two. We're saying law and order. Right. So... When we talk about law and order, we also have to say, look, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And if we can't go into Mexico and do the things that Mexico does to us, right. then that's not law and order. That's chaos and confusion and open borders, and we don't have a country. Mm -hmm. So we have to stop the flow, just like any disease that we might have, be it cancer or something else, tuberculosis or whatever. We have to stop the cause of that cancer. We have to. All right. Now, when we say we're going to send people back to wherever they came from, he's not talking just about Mexico. He's talking no. about El Salvador, Guatemala, That's right. uh, Nicaragua. That's right. You know, just a number of countries. Hey, even even England, France, Germany, and other places where their illegals are coming in. It's not just the Mexican population. Right. Yes, they are predominant. They have seeded into power by their population pressure. Yes. And we know that most of that is illegal. Now, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. The mere fact that you can go downtown LA and pick up an identification 
or passport or birth certificate Absolutely. and then take that to the Department of Motor Vehicles or some other institution to further your cause simply means this. It means that we have a lot more illegal aliens in this country than we ever imagined. So let's just go back maybe 10 or 15 years ago where we know all this was common practice. Uh, you, again, you can go downtown LA, pick up a driver's license, it looks legitimate and so forth. Now you take it to the DMV, they're not inspectors, they don't know what, what they're looking at. It says, oh, it says, you know, citizen, it says, you know, um, they were born in Philadelphia. <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, the, the point is that we have a lot more here <clears throat> at stake, and that when you really boil it down, let's just say, for example, you have a, a family who has come into this illegally through the fraudulent use of identification. That simply means that those people who are now voting are voting illegally and they have come into this country illegally. So we have to stop it. We have to go back and say, wait a minute, where did you get here now? Oh, and you came in from where? And uh, uh, where's your background information? You know. <clears throat> When my great-grandparents and your great-grandparents came into this country, they had to go through Ellis Island. They had to qualify. They had to make sure that they were under quarantine for a certain period of time to make sure that they weren't bringing anything into the country. Absolutely. And so why is it that we have other people who come here and say, oh, we don't need to do that. Oh, we don't need to pay attention to the laws. Even here in Las Vegas, we have illegal operations by illegals, and that money is flowing out of the United States into Mexico and other places. What am I talking about? I'm talking about you can go down into North Las Vegas and even in Las Vegas and find cars parked all over the place with for sale signs. You know what they are? They're people who are Ill, have gotten into the auctions illegally, have uh, through their friends and associates, bought cars, put them on the street for sale. Well, what does that mean? It means that millions of dollars are flowing out of the country because those people don't have licenses, they're not entitled to go into the auctions, they're not entitled to sell, and the people that buy the cars from them have no <clears throat> security whatsoever. They're, they're selling them cars without smogs, they're selling them cars that are unsafe, and we are the ones that have to pay for that <clears throat> through the accidents and traffic situations that have been created. Look here just locally where the traffics and the accidents have increased substantially over the last year and a half to two years ever since 70,000 people have gained licenses who had, had no real experience behind them and now we have a lot of a lot of casualties as a result of that and look at the traffic that's created and the, and the traffic snares that have been that have happened just by that. Think about it. If you, and this is 2017, what's it going to look like in 2018, 2019, 2020, as this cancer spreads? Are we going to be snared in traffic and not be able to get off and get so backed up? Where's, how do you stop that? Well, I'm not so sure that I know how to stop that, but there are certain ways that, that we can prevent it from happening and spreading. And so I'm going to let you pick up on that, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. I just think it's ridiculous, man. And I think what's what's been going on, I just hope, and this is what I was going to do a show on probably pretty soon, if not tomorrow, the next week, is I hope Donald Trump understands uh, what he's got himself into. I think it's one thing to live in New York City, to live in Trump Towers, to even campaign all across the country where he just got tremendous support from the people. The people came out and voted for a Republican in numbers that they never have before. I know my whole family voted for him. And, um, but I just think he needs to understand. I lived in Washington, D.C. It's a different animal. Those people have been dealing with those lobbyists and dealing with those leaders from those other countries, the Saudi royal family. Those people have been putting billions of dollars into those politicians' pockets over the last 30, 40 years. They don't want to give up their lifestyle. They don't want to give up what's been going on. That's why the whole reason the Clinton started the Clinton Foundation is just a large bank account for people to donate money to have access to this country. And that's been going on for decades now, Republican and Democrat. He is an independent. He ran under the Republican Party. 
Donald Trump is a nationalist. He is a patriot. He's an independent. He's taking a huge pay cut to do this job. This guy's a billionaire. He doesn't have to do a job for four hundred thousand dollars a year, which he's not even going to accept. So he's doing it because he loves our country, number one. And but I just hope he understands when he talked about draining the swamp. It is a deep swamp, and it's filled with people with deep pockets. And they do not want to change what's been going on. They don't want to change the immigration laws. They don't want to change anything. They will even accept a thousand terrorists to get one person that will vote for them, to get one person that will work cheaply. So they don't care about the American people. That's obvious by the number of attacks we've had in our country, by the number of attacks that have happened all over the world. Look what's going on in Germany under Angela Merkel, the leader over there. You know, they're letting in all these Syrians and their terrorist attack numbers are going up. It's happening in France. It's happening in England. Luckily, England is waking up and uh, they're, you know, voting more right wing in their country and they're voting to uh, stop the flow of immigration in their country. But it's happening all over the world. And it's, it was part of the new world order. This is what they wanted. They wanted open borders all over the world. They actually want one currency in the world. They, that's why they created the euro, which is about to be dissolved now because Britain's about to leave the European Union. But that's what they wanted. They wanted one world order, one currency, no borders, no countries. They just wanted those few families, like the Rothschilds and then some of the other royal families all over the country. And the Clintons were trying to become a royal family. That's what they wanted. They wanted a dynasty. And they wanted these few families to basically, under the, the New World Order and the World Bank, and they also wanted to use uh, the UN, which is really their army, the United States, that's, that's really their black co-op army. And they wanted to use those three things to create a new world order. And the people woke up and the people saw what was going on and it shocked the liberal media because they thought the people were stupid and were just gonna sit back and accept what was gonna happen to them. And they didn't. People woke up, they voted for Trump. They didn't say it because they didn't wanna be criticized in their communities or on camera. But when they went in that voted booth, they voted for Donald Trump because he was speaking to them. Close our borders, make America first, bring America back, bring American jobs back, punish people for taking their factories overseas. And then you're going to turn around and sell your goods back to us? No. If you do that, you're going to be taxed like you never have before. And that's starting to make Carrier and Ford think about taking their plants to other countries. So that's why he's the right man at the right time for the job. But I hope he understands the job that's ahead of him because this has been going on for years and these people don't want to give up their power. Look, they don't. They don't want to give up their power. So. Well, Chris, you, you know, you're right on the right track in, in terms of this world order. But let, let, let me uh, highlight a couple of things that are going to happen. And now we do have a choice. We don't have to be part of the new world order. Yeah. All right. We can be part of the Cobra Wars. Yes. Uh, now, when I say Cobra Wars, I'm, we're not just talking about Medicare. We're not just talking about inverters and things like that. We're talking about actually making things happen as a unit. Now, every one of us is a unit, but combined, we make a force. And so that's what we have to do is we have to combine our forces. Yeah. Now, when I say that, I'm going to go a little bit further and tell you exactly what we need to do. We've all heard about Russia and the implications and Putin and, and, and everything else. I'm going to tell you something. Those people are more aligned with us than they are with, than we are with most of the other yes. countries. And I'm not saying that Germany and, and, you know, Spain and a few of the others are, are not in that same ballpark, but we're talking about law and order. And when you have law and order, you must be able to enforce that. Yes. I want to ask you, who are the two greatest superpowers in the world today? The United States and Russia. There you go. The United <laughs> States and Russia. And we are going to get together with Russia. Yes. That is a, that is a, that's a promise. Now, we see that both Putin and Trump have already kind of talk to each other, all right? But it needs to go beyond talk, because just like you said, if we're going to have law and order, we must have the power to enforce it. Well, okay, so why would that take place? Well, because we're both superpowers, that's number one. Number two, we have enough I've been a little bit hesitant about bringing this out at this time, but I'm going to anyway. And 
you know, you, you've heard talk about the monetary system and so forth, and and uh, that's true. Now, the Rothschilds uh, have well established themselves. They they have come together, but they also made a statement. They basically said, they who control the money also controls the politics. So when you when you when you talk about that and you say, okay, well, what is Russia and the United States got to offer that is going to change that? Well, uh, again, Russia and the United States, and look, hey, there's no secret. We're going back to the gold and silver. You know, we're going back to gold and silver. Okay, and collectively, the United States and Russia have more gold than anybody else in the world. Okay, so. So we talk about the money. Now, all right, we'll say, all right, well, okay, you got the gold, you got the power, you got the military, you got all of those things. Uh, how are you going to bring this together? The first thing that you do is you say, okay, we have to come together with them and make it clearly understood that this is the way it's going to be in Russia, this is the way it's going to be in the United States, and collectively we got each other's back. Now, others can join and become part of that. But initially it's going to be a bilateral, it's going to be a bilateral program. Now, uh, I have to bring up another subject, and I want you folks to answer this question. And if you have a different explanation than I do, uh, you'll be the first ones in the world that's ever done that. But it gets back to uh, not just the American citizen, but it gets back to men and women. And basically, men and women are equal to yet diametrically opposed. Equal to yet diametrically opposed in purpose. Now, what what does that mean? Well, what it means is that everything in the world is built upon the binary system, having a base of two. Now, this takes a little bit of an explanation, and I came across it purely by chance. But the fact is that if you're playing any kind of a game, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, chess, I don't care what it is, there's always, uh, you know, two sides. You know, there could be four on a side, there could be 12 on a side, it doesn't make any difference. The fact of the matter is that it starts with a base of two. If you have a fight and you've got uh, 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 Muhammad Ali and, and somebody else, you've got two people. Now, the point that I'm trying to make is, well, everybody agrees with that, okay? Now, the, what they don't understand, what took me so long to understand, was what makes it happen. And so, you know, I've asked a number of people, you know, uh, when we talk about binary system, we're talking about up and down, we're talking about light and darkness, we're talking about red and white, red and blue, and so on and so forth. The point is that there's those are base of two that always starts up. What controls them? Now, Chris, I think I've told you what that is, but let me see if you know. What controls? What makes it work? I don't know. Explain it to me. Okay, well, I'm going to explain it to, to you. Now, this, again, is something I've stumbled on by accident, and it, it truly was amazing to me, and I, I was, believe it was a revelation to me, because I was working on, of all things, a gaming a, a game mm -hmm. for, for for gambling mm -hmm. and gaming purposes. And uh, I struggled this for over a couple of years. I had gone to Montana and I was in the forefront of gambling up there. And we were dealing 21, we had poker and we had uh, Kino. Mm -hmm. And But when I went up there at the time, I was under the impression that the 21 was legal. Well, guess what? It wasn't. And the sheriff came in one day and knocked on the door and said, hey, you take that out of work on the jail. So we took it up. Well, I developed a game that was within the, within the parameters of poker. I called it poker roll. It really wasn't. It really wasn't poker, but that's what I called it. You see, there's a, a lot of differences between, um, for example, I'll give you an example, a raffle and a drawing. Well, a raffle and a drawing are equal to, equal to each other, but one is legal and one is not. So uh, the, the differences between the two is necessarily the wording, and we find that prevalent in some of our laws today, is where one is legal and the other is not. Well, to try to make that long story short, it took me over two years batting my head against the wall trying to figure out a problem that was in the game. So one night I woke up 
and I had it. And I sat down, and I wrote it down, and from there, um, I went to the Nevada Gaming Commission. From there, I also went to the U.S. Patents Office, and I got the only patent in the world, in the world. Mm -hmm. Nine billion people, and I got the only patent in the world with deck of playing cards. Well, you say, what the hell is a deck of playing cards got to do with the binary system? Well, the fact is, the game and the cards are based on the binary system. And the binary system, as you well know, is nothing more than zeros and ones, having a base of two. Now, I ask you, what makes the computer work? My wife is Zero a computer the ones. program. Zero what makes the, the computer the work is <laughs> you. That's you. All right, so well, when you boil that down, it takes a catalyst to make it work. It, there has to be a catalyst. Now, you say football, for example. Where's the catalyst? Well, okay, you've got two teams, and you've got a referee. The referee is the catalyst that makes it work, because if there wasn't any rules and so forth to follow, they'd go all over the place and would never know what the heck was, was right or wrong. So a catalyst is required to make these things work. And such is the case with a new law and order. We must have a catalyst to make it work. Okay. Now, who would best be uh, the catalyst to make Russia and the United States? Now, this is just in, uh, in the initial formation of law and order. It's not, it's not a new world order. It's law and order. So the best country to help us, in, at least in my opinion. Now, I, I could be wrong about this, but I've looked at the I looked at the essentials, and the essential ingredients are this: nuclear power, gold, and uh, uh, the, the armies to support it. Okay, and and a, and a political willingness to cooperate and watch each other's back. Now, you can say, well, we got the United Nations. Well, that doesn't work like this. Yes. All right, and they don't have they don't have the fundamentals that are necessary to really enforce it. What are the what are the fundamentals? Money. That's right, money. Okay. So uh, what I'm saying is this: that the most likely country, based on information that I have, is India. Well, well, India. We're gonna have to wrap it up, Lou. We come to the end of our time. But listen, Lou Baker is going to have a show very soon on Radio Tribune. Starting. We're, we're, Two. Starting at 2 o'clock, okay. and we're going to be looking forward to that. He's going to make that announcement. Do you want to make it now, Luke? Do you want to oh, tell yes. Uh, you, you, you can look forward to the programs. It's going to be called Cobra. Wow. And well, the reason for being called Cobra is, as I have initially explained, is that it's some, that Cobra is there to help the people. There you go. And so what we're looking for is what Don has promised. He is our voice. He needs to listen to us. And we need to repeal Obamacare and have a substitute plan. But guess what? It's already there. So we're going to expand upon that. And we're going to talk about the monetary system and how we're going to get together with Russia to make this work. Lou Baker, you heard it here first. Cobra. It'll be starting at 2 o'clock very soon here at Radio Tribune. We're excited to have Lou join the Tribune family. Once again, you can Google us and watch us. Face the Tribune with Rolando LaRoss. Chris Garcia, the conservative American, will be up in a couple of hours. And soon, Cobra with Lou Baker will be coming up soon here on Radio Tribune. Exciting things here happening at the station. Thank you so much for watching. God bless America, our troops, and Godspeed to Donald Trump. See you tomorrow. And we off. <laughs>